once upon a time there were four friends mohan jay charlie and karan all of them loved history especially because they liked visiting the past but they also had a secret they had a time machine that no one else knew about and in this time machine they used to go to several different adventures as a matter of fact once while they were watching the taj mahal getting built they were even caught by shah jahan himself so what happened next is that when they went to school their history teacher gave them a homework they all had to prepare all the knowledge about several different civilizations from the bronze age so jay got the egyptian civilization then mohan got the mesopotamian civilization karan got the indus valley or the harappan civilization and lastly charlie got the chinese civilization so now let's see what they did after they hopped on inside their time machine well once this machine stopped moving they got down and they realized that they were in the chinese civilization in the 1765 bc in china so this is where charlie hopped off then the rest went back to the time machine and entered the indus valley civilization which was right here in our own indian subcontinent near present day pakistan this was in 2500 bce after this both jay and mohan went back to the time machine and they went to the egyptian civilization which was in 3000 bc there they saw some people wearing white clothes building pyramids both of them were really astonished but this is where jay dropped off and finally mohan went to the mesopotamian civilization which was also in 3000 bce the important cities of this civilization were sumer akkad and assyria which is in present day iraq somewhere near the rivers there was a forest and that is exactly where mohan decided to hide his time machine what do you think was common among all of these civilizations yes they were all next to rivers for example it was in between the rivers tigris and euphrates where the mesopotamian civilization had taken birth also do you know that the egyptian civilization has a nickname well it's called the gift of nile because it is said that without the nile river this civilization would have never taken birth next was the chinese civilization which took place right next to a river called huang he or huang ho or simply the yellow river because it was yellow in color due to the silt deposits that was present in the water lastly guess where the indus valley civilization took birth well yes it did take place in india but it was right next to a river called indus after this the boys started to look for their source materials so that they can find information for their project so mohan found out that on top of these ziggurats the main temples and most important buildings of this civilization were built apart from that he found several artifacts with many inscriptions on them such as this image here next jay did not have any difficulty in finding these source materials because wherever he looked he could see tall pyramids huge statues and also many different artifacts apart from that next charlie saw that china was filled with huge beautiful imperial towers in imperial palaces in which the kings used to live along with their families after that he also saw temples and several bronze tools and weapons being used by the chinese people he also noticed that these people were recording about themselves on such bamboo strips they also used to write on silk goods which were very famous back then and charlie quickly took some of these bamboo strips so that he can later on show it during his project then in the indus valley civilization karan had a really hard time finding the source materials all he could find were few pots seals and tablets but he moved on next let's take a look at their town planning well mohan realized that the city that he was in had a wall around it and he saw that people lived on both sides of the walls the slaves and the farmers used to live on the outer part of the wall whereas in the inside part of the wall there was a sacred area this was the ziggurat 
on top of which is the temples as we've already learned the temples and the important buildings were built and this was the most important part of town apart from that the rest of the part of town was also important but in that part only the uh, middle class people used to live for example the merchants and traders in egyptian civilization jay noticed that all the roads were running parallel to the river nile apart from that he saw that the kings lived in lavish huge palaces like this one and then he also noticed that the commoners houses were built out of bricks and they were in the center of the town where all the administrative buildings were also built finally he saw that the huge pyramids were built at a distance from the town and the farmers and the slaves used to live close to them slaves were also there in chinese civilization in the chinese civilization chali saw that the towns were there on both sides of the rivers he also saw that the king used to live in the center of the town and on the outer parts of the town were the different workshops and this is where the common people used to live and work finally in indus valley civilization karan realized that the towns were divided into two separate parts there were it was divided into citadels and lower towns on top of these citadels were the most important buildings such as their granaries their great bath and even assembly hall this is where the most important people used to work and live in the lower part of the town the commoners like you and me used to live the lower part of the town had planned streets and pla well planned uh, buildings and these were usually single storied or multi storied they even had courtyards in their houses just imagine and and he saw that all the streets cut exactly at right angles and he absolutely loved how perfect everything was in that city apart from the town being divided into citadels and lower towns he saw that there were well covered drainage system and he was shocked because they looked exactly like our drainage systems today he also saw that the streets cut into each other at right angles and he was in love with how perfectly the city was planned well now these boys thought that why were people living so far away from each other why can't all the people live exactly close to each other why were the cities planned this way they realized that this must have been because of the social structure so they saw that in mesopotamian civilization the highest the most important person of the town was the king and next to him were the priests after them came the common people like the merchants traders and farmers and at the end were the slaves who had miserable lives and they had to do everything that the other three classes asked them to do even in the egyptian civilization there were slaves that's what jay observed he saw that the slaves had miserable lives and were forced to do everything that the other classes begged asked them to do so now let's see what these other classes were firstly in the top of the hierarchy were the kings who were there known as pharaohs right and they were considered equal to gods so there was no one else equal to them after the pharaohs or the kings came the priests and the vizier who was the vizier well vizier was the chief minister who used to help the king in completing his administrative duties after this came the middle class which included the farmers and servants and like we already mentioned there were slaves in this civilization as well then in chinese civilization charlie saw that the most important person even in this civilization was the king and his family members apart from that aristocracy included the nobles and the king's soldiers who had to fight so they were very important because they had to uh, sometimes give up their life in the line of duty apart from that in the middle class of this chinese civilization were the merchants and the farmers and again charlie saw that there were several slaves even in the chinese civilization and they were treated equally as the servants who had a very similar fate but karan observed that there were no kings in the indus valley civilization the highest position belonged to the priests and his officials 
then in the middle class came the farmers and merchants and the rest of the people so he saw that this civilization was very good because it did not have any slaves in it now the boys were hungry so they met each other for lunch and they started discussing about the religion in all of these civilizations all of them saw that people of all of these civilizations were worshippers of nature just that the names were different for example in egyptian civilization the worship of sun god re was considered very important they also worshiped other gods such as god of war and god of the dead people apart from that what the boys really found funny was in the egyptian civilization they also worshiped cats cats were considered really important back in that day next in the chinese civilization they also worshiped nature apart from that Charlie saw that they really respected their elders and there was a tradition of ancestor worship however with time the worship of lord buddha started there and it can also be found in this day and age lastly in the indus valley civilization karan found many similarities to hinduism they did worship nature but apart from that they worshiped mother goddess and pashupati shiva along with many different sacred animals now let's talk about their script each of these civilizations had different scripts that is what the boys observed now let's see what the mesopotamian script was well it was called the cuneiform script and they were engraved on clay the scripts were engraved on clay so that they lasted longer they were engraved using stems of tree on clay and then later they were dried so that they become long lasting a similar method was also used in the indus valley civilization but unfortunately we haven't been able to decipher what these meant exactly so maybe when in the future we get it we will learn about it as well next in the egyptian civilization they used the hieroglyphic script which were basically pictures or rep pictures representing their thoughts and ideas right and j found out that they usually used to use this hieroglyphic writings everywhere even on a paper like material called papyrus apart from that pictures were inscribed on walls of inside pyramids and tombs and on pillars everywhere in the chinese civilization people used the pictographic script which was found on bamboo and silk so this pictographic script was very similar to hieroglyphic script because they were also pictures and drawings which were representing an idea as a matter of fact it was so similar to present day chinese that if in today's world an archaeologist or a historian knows how to read chinese they can very easily decipher what the ancient chinese were trying to tell us now they started talking about the various occupations they all observed that mainly everyone in all of these civilizations were farmer apart from that pottery and trade were also two occupations that they found in each of these civilizations however jay observed that while making these huge pyramids the egyptian people had mastered the art of stone making and even carpentry and other construction work such as sculptures and huge statues apart from that jay also saw that the egyptians were making some fine quality linen this was also the material that was used in wrapping the mummies well in chinese civilization charlie also saw that people were making silk clothes they had learned this technique by cultivating it from silk worms how interesting is that apart from that people in chinese civilization were also making porcelain pottery these were really famous back then and even in this day and age are super expensive they are made using chinese clay which is really really expensive apart from that charlie saw that people in the chinese civilization were great at metal work and were making many things from bronze so they were bronze casting as well later in the indus valley civilization karan saw that the people were really good at making cotton This was the first civilization that discovered cotton that you and me even in this day and age wear. 
So he saw that the spinning and weaving of cotton was very common. Apart from that, he remembered and he saw how well planned the cities were and the buildings were made with perfect precision. This was because the bricks that were used in making the buildings were of uniform size. So another important occupation was brick making. He also saw that these people made very beautiful clay sculptures which even in this day and age are seen and admired by a lot of people. So when the boys were about to leave, they saw a man looking through something like a telescope. So now they were really curious to find about the scientific developments of each of these civilizations. Well, firstly, Mohan saw that the Mesopotamians had their own number system, which was the sexagesimal number system with 60 as its base. Today we have our number system, which is called the decimal number system and it has 10 as its base. Well, the Egyptians were not really far behind because they also had their own system of counting tens with which they could even count to hundreds and many billions. After this, we can also some understand the point that the Egyptians were really great at maths because they could even add, subtract, multiply and divide like we can do today. In fact, they could also calculate the area of triangles and rectangles. Apart from that, they also created their own algebra system using which they were able to build the pyramids. Just imagine how intelligent these people were. Well, that is not the only thing that they did. They also had a solar calendar with the help of which they calculated that a year has 365 days. They were the first people to do that. But were they really correct? Well, however, there was a slight miscalculation in that which was rectified by the Chinese civilization because they were the first civilization to correctly calculate that a year has 365 days plus 6 hours. Now coming to the Mesopotamian civilization, these people were smart too when it came to astronomy as they had a lunar calendar. And by following the sun, they were also able to calculate the length of the day which was 24 hours. Apart from that, the Chinese could correctly predict when there was going to be an eclipse. As you see, eclipse were really important in ancient China and were also used to predict who the next king was going to be. Right? Another important scientific development in the Egyptian civilization was that there were people who were dentists and surgeons. Well, you see, the human body was really important in the Egyptian civilization. As a matter of fact, before someone was buried, they had to be turned into mummies or they had to be mummified, right? And this was, there was an entire process for that. They had to drain out all the water from the body and then the body had to be wrapped in white linen. So they also performed surgeries on dead bodies to learn more about the human body. Apart from that, the Indus people were really well planned as they had well planned cities. Imagine, their street exactly cut into each other at right angles. Apart from that, there were really good drainage systems present in this civilization, which were well covered. And you'd be surprised to know how advanced they were because a well covered drainage system came to Europe only in 1400 CEs. So you can understand how such an old civilization was way ahead of its time. Lastly, they also had clay spindles which they had made which were used into making cotton clothes right and these were the first people to develop clay spindles in today's time these spindles are made of wood the boys observed that even though all of these civilizations were really far ahead of their time most of them came to an end starting with the indus valley or the harappan civilization which came to an end or decline in 1500 bce due to natural calamities such as floods and droughts which made the land uninhabitable. So people left and went over to another place to live. After this, the Mesopotamian civilization also declined in 539 BC due to natural calamities and several different wars. After this, the Egyptian civilization also came to an end in 30 BCE when the Romans came and conquered them. But you will be really surprised by the fact that our Chinese civilization never really declined. This is because 
after the Shang dynasty and the Zhao dynasty, what happened is that their dynasty system kept on repeating itself and so it never really ended. But however, in 1912 CE, it was the monarchy was replaced by a system of modern government. This is how the Chinese civilization is at present day. So after the boys came back home from their fun adventure, they were really pleased with their journey as they had found out everything about each of these Bronze Age civilizations. They were really happy and were now looking forward to their next adventure. So tell me, will you join them in their next adventure as well? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free on deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app and get easy access to more than 5,000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and get a chance to win amazing prizes like Playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.